This video is gonna be all about how to install knock sensors on an early Porsche engine. This one's an 89, but it never came with uh, knock sensors, even though it was a computer controlled ignition. So I'm gonna use the 993 parts to go ahead and retrofit the early engine to measure knock. And it's gonna measure knock on bank one, two, three, and four, five, six. So in this case, this is called the knock bridge. If knock occurs on either head, it'll send a signal down the bridge into the actual sensor. So there's two sensors, two bridges, and that will detect knock in any cylinder that might, that might have a problem. Knock is the number one killer of engines. Detonation knock is very bad. That's when parts start leaving the engine quickly because this is a high performance engine and we're trying to sort of get to the ragged edge and we wanna protect it as much as possible. We're gonna have onboard knock sensors that are constantly listening for knock if case we you know, have a fuel pump issue, maybe it's a really hot day, um, maybe we just um, don't know how to tune it quite yet and we wanna use these in all, in all scenarios. And a special thanks to Richard Cluett, who uh, Cluett Engineering has come up with this solution of mounting this directly to the heads. I got that from his website, so I assume it's been working well for him. So because I wanna use this as a template to drill those three holes, I think it's a good idea to kind of compare that these parts are in good condition. So I have a left and a right, so I can line them up and make sure that one of them's not bent because if I, drill the holes based on a bent one, then I'm, I'm, um, I can't undo that. So the other thing I can try is on the cam towers, sometimes there's these studs on the four, five, six bank for air conditioners. So I can put those in the cam towers. It's the same pitch as the heads and I, it slides right over and then I can put a longer bolt down here in the center. So that means that this is a good template to use. It doesn't seem to be bent. Can check both sides just for completeness while we're here. So these seem to be good original parts with you know, a sloppy fit, which is okay. This doesn't need to be a high tolerance fit, but we do wanna drill the holes right here in the center. So my thought was to make a little template and I've already welded together this little bracket here. That's going to allow me to work here off of the intake stud to locate this bracket so that we can uh, go ahead and tighten it down and then I'll make some drill bushings for this and we can drill it in place. This hole here is a tight clearance to M8 that doesn't have much wiggle room and then this one here is a little bit slotted so I can put this down and I can slide the bracket just to get this piece right where I need it. So in order for this to work, we gotta screw it together from the back side. Here's the bracket, you know, welded together. And when I, I can put my, uh, this square on here and make sure that this thing is mounted perpendicular. So I am going to put some shims underneath each of the cylinders to establish the height. And then I can put some extra gaskets on the intake here to control the position of the bridge. And we'll just do this the same on both sides. So we'll make sure it gets drilled right down the center. In addition to using the little fins on the cylinders, I have these pointers that are, um, I can clamp them down. So I can measure the distance from the end of the head or to the end of the fins to the end of the part. So drill bushings are, are commonly very hard steel and I could buy some, but I also have these roll pins that, that go right inside here and they're kind of a tight fit. So that can serve as a drill bushing so I don't, damage the surface of the aluminum, that's gonna guide the drill right down the center. And then this drill bit's not the final size, but it fits inside this bushing just perfect. So that'll help me drill the hole. And then because it's such tight quarters here, we'll need to use a, um, you know, a right angle drill bit. And it's gonna be a little bit tricky. We may have to shorten the, the drill a little bit, but we'll, we'll get this done. So hit zero there and then bring it over here, it's also zero. This is the uh, drill I'm gonna use. It's an air powered, you know, right angle deal. And I had to shorten the bit a little bit and I also shortened the bushing. It was sticking out quite a bit before, but it goes right in there.
But before I drill, I wanted to show you guys the head. This is from a much earlier engine. This is from a 66 or 7 engine. The ports are much smaller. This is the intake port. But this is the area I'm drilling right here, um, centered into the head. There's a lot of metal. It's In this head, it's probably an inch thick. Just going to go about that deep. That's, um, that's about 9 millimeters right there. So I'm going to mark my drill bit. Make sure nothing goes in the engine. All right, here we go. It's only metal. And sometimes pull it out because it's hard for the chips to come through the drill bushing. So it's a little bit better to you know, just clear it out sometimes. And I'm gonna put some tape on the tin so we don't rub the paint off too much. Almost there, that's the mark right there. Now the metal that goes down in the fins, that's easy to just blow out. That's not damaging the engine at all. That'll just come out the bottom. This one was giving me a little bit of a problem where the, um, the, the bushing was spinning. So I don't want to eat up the aluminum. So I just took some solder and I jammed it there in the slot. So hopefully that'll keep it from spinning. Uh, some people will put the knock sensor right here and that's better than nothing. It's, that's a good solution. So if you ever have an issue with something on this side of the engine, whether it's fuel injection or fuel pressure related or something has gone wrong with those cylinders, you kind of want to know on both sides if it's going to knock. That's what Porsche did. So that's what I'm going to do. So they're reasonably lined up. It's right on top of the date code, um, but it's reasonably lined up to this line in the cylinder. So you kind of tell there it's, it's lined up. And then just to show you down the hole there, there's no, it didn't break through the intake. I mean, it's, it's very thick right here. The passenger side fits in the exact same way. You can kind of see there's a rib right here on the, the, the bridge. It's lined up with the rib and the cylinders. And I have used, you know, this device here to line it up to the edge of the head. Line it up to the edge of the head. So I'm happy with the position of it now. We have the same spacers present underneath there. They're sort of captured in there, just a little bit of drag on them. So it's time to drill this side. And uh, like I said, it's an undersized drill bit, but it's a good way to get the pilot hole started so we can open it up for a tap. Added this clamp because this side was flopping up and down a little bit. Um, and so this is even better than before. It really secures it in the middle and on the ends. So I'm still drilling this one. I'll move over to this one next. All right, now it's time to go the final step. This is the five millimeter drill required for a six millimeter tapped hole. So I've reinstalled the bridge, which is also the uh, alignment tool. And I've used the previous drill bit to make sure that we're, we're locked into those original holes. So that's in the hole. All three just fit right there in the hole. So this is the difference in drill bit size. The second hole is going to go much easier because the, the first hole is already there. So I have to use a new drill bushing this time. And this time it's an aluminum bushing. It actually does spin a little bit inside the bridge, but this hole is gonna go quick. So I'm not too worried about enlarging the hole or anything. This basically is just gonna control the position of the drill bit. 
So here we go. Also, it's clamped down in the new way that I like. So slide that aluminum bushing in there, and uh, this is now ready to drill. So right there is the black Sharpie mark. That is a nine millimeter depth. So the distance between the end of the bushing and that mark is nine millimeters. So when that mark disappears, I just know to stop drilling. <laughs> So that was it. All right, I've put a uh, chamfer bit on the end of the angle tool. So I'm just gonna put a small chamfer on those holes because the casting marks uh, could interfere with the, the, the fit and also the tap. I want the tap to go straight in. All right, before we tap the hole, I'm just using the back of the drill bit to check the depth. So that's right there, a little Sharpie mark on there. This one is slightly less deep, but still deep enough. And then this one is almost exactly the same as cylinder number two. So if anything, this one could go just, you know, half a line deeper. All right, good. I have you know two taps. One is the standard tap, that's to get started. And then this is a bottoming tap. It has threads almost all the way to the end. So that's gonna get us the deepest hole for the bolt to go into and grab as much as possible. So we're looking at about one and a half diameters of thread engagement. That's kind of the minimum, but these don't need to be torqued very high either. Now this procedure isn't as precise because I don't have any like tooling to help keep it straight. So I have this ridge here on the cylinder and then I do have a angle gauge that can kind of tell me if it's level or not. Let me show you. So I can zero my angle finder back here. And then once this gets started, I can just double check that you know we're flat. We want to be sort of less than a degree out. And there's no room for a regular tap wrench there. So I'm just gonna have to go real slow with this adjustable wrench and just, you know, make it straight, make it as straight as I can. Here we go. Just got a little bit of lubricant on there. It's just WD-40. And then I do have Sharpie marks on the tap here, so I kind of know when to stop. You'll feel it bottom out, but uh, rather than wiping out all the threads, I just figured, you know, put a little mark on there so we'll know. This kind of starts itself and holds itself in there too, which is nice. This guy just continues where the other one left off, so it's... It'll go all the way to the bottom of the hole. Slowly but surely, this is like eighth turn at a time, but still quicker than uh, removing the heads. So this location is very, very close to where a knock would actually occur. So as the piston's coming up to top dead center, if it pre-ignites or something is wrong with the timing and it's going to then explode prematurely and it's gonna to try to push the piston down while it's coming up. So I think we'll get a good signal with the bridge and being close to the proximity. The only disadvantage of having it here is that you're also gonna pick up valve train noise. The cam is here, the, uh, the rockers and the valves are also kind of ticking right, right next to the sensor. So we'll hopefully be able to filter that out with today's technology and the way the computers are done. 
They're, uh, they're pretty good, so I think this is going to work out well. I just touched those stampings. Felt like I was defacing Porsche property, but I'm just trying to get a better connection to the heads with the bridge there. So I think we're ready to install it now for good. Now I've already checked that these bolts are the right length and I've installed them without the lock washers to make sure they don't bottom out prematurely. So they are fine the way they are. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of Loctite on each of them. This is just blue Loctite. So that's it. I'm probably doing, that's probably five foot pounds. It's not, it's not a lot. We just wanna make sure that that lock washer is compressed and that they're all kind of even. So we're good to go here. I'm gonna go ahead and leave this loose because I am not sure what direction I want the wire to exit. Probably towards the uh, front of the car, but uh, we'll tighten that later. So the knock sensors come through this little hole here in the fan shroud. I put a rubber grommet in there, and I've also made this, this bracket that basically holds the connectors. So this one here is the uh, four, five, six, and this one here is the one, two, three. They're kind of switched. But based on the wire length, this one's just barely long enough. So I needed that to be the closest uh, connector. So that's the two knock sensors. This one happens to be the cylinder head temperature. And I just wanted them to be clean on the same bracket. So that's what those three are. I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect them now and hook up an oscilloscope. See if we get a reading on these sensors and see how much the uh, signal can transmit from one side to the other. So I've just added some pins to that connector and I have it, you know, very, very crudely connected to my oscilloscope. So these are the leads of the oscilloscope going into the actual meter right there. And I'm reading a bunch of 60 Hertz noise. That's probably due to my lights in here, but I can detect a signal. Let me show you. So the, the first test here is I removed the, um, the cover so I can get access to that bridge. And if I just tap it with a hammer, I can see on the screen, you know, things are happening. Um, there's basically a signal on top of that sine wave. So it's one, two, three, tap. One, two, three, tap. So the other thing I can do is I can put my oscilloscope into frequency mode, the Fourier transform. And that, this is the 60 hertz noise right here. But we should see something in the higher frequencies as I tap it. So now I'm just tapping on the exhaust itself, on the exhaust header. And it does pick up a signal right here. So I'm gonna bang on the um, four, five, six, and the, the wiring is connected to the left side of the engine or the one, two, three. So that does pick up a signal, but it's much louder on this side. So hopefully this is enough to detect actual knocks. We're gonna have to go through some filtering with the Mtron software to get rid of some of that strong noise that's here due to the lighting. And also some of the noise that's generated due to the valve train. But I'm pretty sure we'll be able to get a good signal when the engine does detonate. You know, detonation is the death of engines. So even the slightest knocks that you can't really hear in the driver's seat. We wanna detect those and make sure that we're, we're tuning uh, the engine so that we're getting maximum power right before knock. But the minute knock occurs, we wanna be backing away some of the timing or some of the, the, the fuel, more fuel, whatever it takes to, to stop that knock. So really happy with the setup. Um, I think we'll get more data once we get the Mtron up and running and the engine up and running. So check back for that. Mm -hmm.